friends, good to be back with you. So we have the first quarter moon in Scorpio going on uh, on the 25th yesterday, because I'm always a little bit late. And this is the week for cleaning up, severing, taking cuttings, pruning, planting what has already been started. So we're working with what was begun last week at the new moon. And this is the time to do all the boring stuff. The weeks that we have the sun and the moon square, the first and last quarter moon, this is when we mow, we edge, we prune, we rake, we clean up, and we prepare for the fun stuff, which more typically occurs at the new moon and the full moon. So this is the time to sever from the mother plant, so clones, cuttings. Um, typically we're going to start seeds during the week of the new moon and we're going to do things that are more related to taking from an existing plant the weeks of the sun and moon square, the first and last quarter moon. So this is the time to get out the lawnmower and to look around and see what needs to be done. We are concerned with arranging, moving, fixing, uh, getting things into place when we have the first quarter and the last quarter moon. So let me show you a few things that I'm working on this week. So this is my big project for this week, is getting this whole area here where all these naturalized strawberries were, getting that cleared out and mulched and getting these raised beds positioned. I just kind of flopped them down and I did some amount of sheet mulching here where I start with cardboard and then I layer that with straw and then layer that with manure and then do it like a lasagna layering thing and end up planting just into, um, the soil that I create from that. But you can see that I have managed to blot out a lot of the strawberries and the weeds here, but I'm extending that over here to where this chicken coop is. That I don't know where I'm gonna put, probably right back behind the fence so they can get rid of all those blackberries back there. So this is going to turn into something shockingly beautiful. Right now it's really kind of a mess and there's just, random plants growing here and there. I do have one little egg, eggplant in there, you can see. But I'll get these beds filled with soil. I'll get more beds uh, built. And when I show you next week, it is going to look fabulous. So let's walk on through and see what we can see. I'll take you down to see where I have another sheet mulching project going on down around the corner. We walk down through the path here. Here's Pony doing her job. Hey, Cookie. If we come down here around the corner, we can see another large sheet mulching project that I started several months ago. So once again, cardboard first to blot out the weeds. Um, in this case, it's just filled with Queen Anne's lace, this area, and so you just have to do something to suppress whatever's there, straw and the manure over the top. And you can see some of the manure over there. Um, I've got plenty of that because I do have horses. So this is where I grow large crops, uh, things that need to vine, um, a lot of tomatoes that I just let grow straight on the ground because I was lazy this year. You can see that I did manage to cage in some tomatoes there to keep the pony away from them because she has helped them herself to most of the tomatoes this year. So that's been extra annoying. As you can see I planted um, this one just actually not too many weeks ago, the squash and then blackberries, the bane of my existence. But this is my favorite technique when it comes to getting soil prepared fast cardboard straw and as much compost or manure as you can pile onto that and then just plant into it mm, oh it depends on the heat uh, anywhere from three to six months later so why don't we walk up the way i'll give you a little bit of a tour here 
Here's my Sarama roosters, tiniest little roosters in town. They're so tiny, you can't even believe how tiny and cute they are. And if we walk up this way, past the wild grape, or naturalized strawberries, this area here is all just gonna be fruits. Um, a mountain of medicinal herbs over here. And the Rose of Sharon has finally bloomed for me. This is, uh, I think, the fourth? I think I have four. But, ah, oh, so beautiful. Love hibiscus so much. If we look over this way, it's just a sea of valerian. Olive trees. All kinds of naturalized herbs, which I actually have thinned out extensively this year. So if we go back here, this is where I'm going to put the new greenhouse. I already have it, I just need to build it. And over here to the right, we have the kiwi arbor. Loaded with kiwis, loaded with plums, roses, grapes. There's a lot going on in that arbor. And then on this little apple tree, tons and tons of apples this year. I did get quite a bit of fruit this year. So if we turn this way, you can see the olive trees, which are still quite small, but I am looking forward to get to getting whatever kinds of fruit I can get off of those. The pawpaw trees over here, plum trees. Um, this fruit and flower garden has a, really a lot of um, diversity in it, quite a lot of different uh, fruits, vegetables, and several different types of dwarf fruit trees, which I so much adore. So if we look over here, we can see my little cabin. And in front of that, this is the next project I have. Planting! This is what we want to do on the week of the square moon. We want to get into the ground, what's already existing. So there's quite a lot for me to get in here. Um, a lot of sage carnations and you can see my liatris which I absolutely love love liatris and spiked flowers so much this bed is filled with a lot of ladies mantle and agrimony uh, a few other things you can see quite a lot of zinnias and carnations in there as well and this is an herb bed so this is also an activity for the Sun square moon week harvesting drying. Um, I harvest a lot on the full moon week, but I will also do that on square moon weeks because I need time to dry. This is another project that I've got up my sleeve this week. Uh, window boxes that lend themselves to cuttings. So whenever you have something you need to thin, propagate it. Don't waste it. So this is a really good example of that nice, full, thick, flowers here. They do do better when they receive a little bit of a pruning in the hotter months. And if you look on my potting table over here, you can see another window box just bursting with beauty. So we get those in to make mother plants. And this is my last project that I'm going to be working on this week. Finding a home for all of these nursery plants. Um, this is just a few that I've got out of a lot. Uh, a lot of arborvitas of all kinds, privets, different uh, types of fruit, small fruit trees, uh, all kinds of plants that just need to find a home. So I'll be doing a lot of planting and landscaping. So something else to keep in mind when we have the sun and the moon square is that we can have a couple of days where we are not really sure how to get our actions on the same page as our needs. So what we need and what we're doing can be out of alignment for a while while we're wrestling with this. So we look for a few days when we have the opening square and we look for a few days when we have the closing square at why is it that I need this or I require this but I do this. and we really look very strongly at our hypocrisy. So today we have, yesterday and today, we have the sun and Leo in a square to 
the moon in Scorpio. What happens when we have this particular square? Well, we have the need for self-expression, the need for romance, fun and games, to just get out there and enjoy ourselves in a direct conflict with intensity. What we need to feel like we're on the edge, peak experiences. And, and Scorpio is about feelings. It's about our inner world, our inner landscape. So we have more uh, superficiality versus depth. And how can we make a life for ourselves that we can allow for both of these things? Because a certain amount of fun and games, that is going to bring us, that's, good. that's a good time in life. It, it, it may not be the most serious moments, but we need those times of levity. We need to cut loose. We need to let our hair down. Scorpio is always about hitting something to the fullest or experiencing something to the fullest. So we don't, uh, we, don't we don't appreciate anything cursory or superficial when we're dealing with Scorpio. So therein lies the problem. We can have both. And we learn this when we have the sun and the moon square. A lot of us really wrestle with why is what I need not on the page with what I'm doing? And these are the days out of the month where we can really recognize how we can get more in alignment with what we really want so we aren't experiencing those moments of doubt or those moments of personal hypocrisy. So I hope this was helpful. I will be back with another video next week uh, updating you on all of my projects and showing you all of the new ones related to the full moon. So I will see you guys super soon. Bye-bye.